So, this is a bit of a pet peeve, but I'm noticing that a lot of sandbox action games these days, that aren't made by Rockstar, constantly want to kick you out of the action and throw you into this slow-ass menu with giant puffy glowing icons everywhere that upgrade your stuff. And the problems that I have with that stuff are pet peeves, but they're not the end of the world, they're not gonna make or break the quality of the whole game, but they can diminish it. And that's why it bugs me. Slow-ass upgrade menus are steadily becoming ubiquitous. They're not just popular in sandbox games, but across the whole action genre. This year, I clicked through slow-ass upgrade menus in Sleeping Dogs, Far Cry 3, Watch Dogs, Tomb Raider, and even Shadow Warrior. <laughs> a game as dedicated to fast-paced and literally visceral combat as Shadow Warrior still has the same kind of slow-ass upgrade menu that connects to the same kind of weak-ass upgrade system. I'm coming to accept that this stuff is going to be normal for a while. After all, character progression is a classic aspect of the action genre that never really went away. Upgrade systems are not a bad thing at all, a lot of modern fast-paced action games do them right, but none of them should have to have an upgrade system that feels weak. A weak upgrade system is one that feels unnecessary. It's there to just incentivize the consumption of optional content or to try to encourage the player to feel invested and play longer. A weak upgrade system is one where upgrading does not feel good, where the upgrades themselves don't significantly change the game or unlock new areas or playstyles. A weak upgrade system is one where you can look across the 52 different upgrades between the 8 different skill trees in Watch Dogs and say, wow, I don't need any of those. Skill trees, experience points, and leveling systems are RPG archetypes because they are abstractions. They are simplified representations of complex actions that the player has little direct control over. And abstracting complex actions into numerical values is what RPGs are all about. In the olden days, a traditional RPG was a game that sacrificed direct control of combat in favor of control over probabilities that influenced the outcome of combat that kinda played itself. RPG combat was, and still is, more about planning and probability than it is about timed reflex or aiming challenges. It's less about directly controlling characters, and more about controlling the abstract qualities that control characters. But nowadays, that distinction isn't so clear. Now, the RPGs have twitchy combat, and the twitchy combat games have RPG elements. So, I guess, should I call these sandbox games with the RPG upgrade systems ARPGs? It seems like whether or not a game is just called an RPG now has more to do with how much control the player has over the abstractions they don't directly control, like the variables that determine how much a blow hits for, rather than whether or not the player can determine when, where, and how those blows land. But that's not really what the skill trees, the leveling systems, and the experience points in, say, Watch Dogs are for. They're there, but they don't feel like they should be there because they don't feel like they're needed. This kind of genre mixing created a balance problem. Your action game character is well equipped from the start, and the overall game is not balanced for all the RPG style upgrading it has you doing. The game already provides you with a very forgiving stealth system and craftable distractions that make that stealth even easier. You've got an overpowered melee take down that you just press one button for, from beginning to end. And though the game does discourage gunplay by starting you out with a low health cap, your character begins and ends the game with a very steady aim, headshots that instantly kill, and a trusty supply of infinitely replenishing health. So there's this big upgrade screen, and you don't really need any of it. A few of the craftable items are a bit interesting, but the game is still easy without them. Most of the upgrades are linear damage, health, or accuracy increases that don't exactly feel feel necessary, nor do they seem to be abstracting anything logically coherent. How exactly does the process of spending experience points on self-improvement correlate to an increase in shotgun damage on vehicles, or better traction when driving off-road, or an increase in your car's health? There's a progression wheel in Watch Dogs, which is a web of totally different trees, and the upgrades on this one just crack me up. You have five audio diaries that give you a shotgun that just shows up in your inventory. You get a sweet motorcycle after winning your first poker game. You can complete ten chess puzzles to boost your bullet time meter. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It reminds me of this one upgrade in Sleeping Dogs where performing an action hijack makes the police want to chase you less. Because apparently this crazy conspicuous stunt is less noticeable only after buying the upgrade. 
And Shadow Warrior has these linear damage value increases, and I can't help but question what exactly they're abstracting here. You can increase damage to lesser demons by 10%. The flavor text says it's because your dude is learning where to aim, but it's a first-person shooter. Knowing where to aim is what I do. That's my job as the player. The whole game is literally pointing and clicking on the right parts of the screen. Learning where to aim is not abstracted that much. It's a core gameplay skill the player has to learn for themselves. Watch Dogs and Sleeping Dogs and Shadow Warrior are not RPGs. They are Twitch action games with fully developed action systems that have half-baked RPG elements tacked on. You have direct control over the elements the upgrade system alters, and those elements are Twitch action gaming skills. Therefore, the upgrade system is trying to dictate your own skills rather than those of the character. It's like trying to be an RPG when the core gameplay experience has nothing to do with being an RPG. And it's not like you couldn't alter these games to be more like the RPG the upgrade system seems to want them to be. Watch Dogs actually comes awfully close to playing like what Deus Ex Human Revolution would be like if it was an open world game, which could have been awesome. In Human Revolution, you have a similar overpowered melee takedown move, but it required precious resources to use, and the upgrade system was there to minimize that cost and to maximize its usefulness. In dedicated FPS ARPGs, Oops, you aren't really given a good, reliable playstyle by default. You have to upgrade your way into it, so you can't really ignore that system. I'm playing through System Shock 2 these days, and I was quite surprised to discover that the game literally blocks your progress if you don't upgrade yourself. You have to upgrade your way into being competent at the combat, or else you can only win by attrition. The gunplay is really bad in that game, the engine wasn't built for action but that's okay because shooting things is not your default mode of interaction with the world or even with the combat. You have generous options for stealth, melee attacks, environmental hacks, and even psychic powers, but only if you upgrade the corresponding skills. And really, Watch Dogs isn't that different. Most missions give you a similar three-pronged approach to your objectives. You can get to them through combat, stealth, or sometimes entirely remotely through hacking. But the fact that you don't have to upgrade your way into those paths means that you can mix and match in and out of different playstyles to play improvisationally, and that's something you can't do in a more traditional RPG. So why did they tack this thing on? I don't know. In all honesty, this is actually a really nitpicky video, because boring upgrade systems are not exactly terrible, they're just boring. And they're everywhere. Upgrading my character in Watch Dogs wasn't painful, it wasn't a frustrating process, but it did feel unexciting and pointless. Not unlike grinding. They could have used those big upgrade trees for so many more interesting things, or just rebalanced the game to suit it. Maybe that overpowered melee takedown wouldn't feel overpowered if it was an upgrade. Maybe having players make compromises and trade-offs to dedicate to their own playstyle would make for more thoughtful and interesting gameplay, while also keeping them from exploiting the dominant strategies of an unbalanced and open-ended system. Or maybe the game would have just been more balanced from the start, without all those upgrades. Sleeping Dogs has this beautiful city to explore and a story that's written surprisingly well, but I can't find myself getting into it because there are so many jarring breaks in the pacing of the story where they expect you to do optional content that feeds into an upgrade system that just doesn't feel worth the effort. I noticed in Shadow Warrior that when I first started it up, all my moves felt a bit sluggish and weak, and when I took a look at just how expansive the upgrade system was, I had a few suspicions why. Sure enough, during the mid-game, when I was nicely upgraded, it finally felt as satisfying and crazy and fast as it should have felt from the start. And it's not upgrade systems that I think are bad, it's just upgrade systems that feel like they were tacked on that are bad. There are still a lot of games that do it right. A lot of games stick to the Metroid philosophy of using upgrades both for combat and as navigational aids. And it's always nice when upgrades cause your character to animate differently or get entirely new sets of abilities that drastically change gameplay. And I'm not really going to complain if a game is properly balanced to be significantly more difficult if you don't buy the upgrades it offers you. And I'm also a fan of non-intrusive, organic interfaces that make character progression happen without interrupting gameplay. Uh, but I don't know, I feel like I went on and on about a really minor annoyance just now. This problem isn't the end of the world, but 
doesn't that just highlight the mediocrity of it all? It's a problem that's no big deal, but still annoying, and it happens in games that aren't that bad, but aren't super great either. As more and more genre-mixing sandbox games come out that cross multiplayer with single player with action elements with RPG elements, I'm afraid that they might end up trying to be okay for everybody, and as a result, be great for nobody. 